This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue our coverage of the 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq by looking at the imprisonment of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who's been jailed for exposing U.S. war crimes in Iraq, Afghanistan and beyond. Julian has spent nearly four years locked up in the U.K.'s notorious Belmarsh prison, often called Britain's Guantanamo. He's been held there as the U.S. government seeks his extradition to face espionage and other charges. If extradited and convicted in the U.S., Julian faces 175 years in a maximum security prison. In 2010, WikiLeaks gained international attention after publishing a trove of classified documents leaked by former U.S. Army soldier Chelsea Manning. Included were numerous accounts of war crimes in Iraq. One video released by WikiLeaks showed a U.S. helicopter gunship in Baghdad slaughtering a dozen civilians, including two Reuters staff. Reuters journalist, the up-and-coming uh, photographer, videographer, 22-year-old Namir Noor Eldin, and his driver, Saeed Shema, father of four. WikiLeaks titled the video, Collateral Murder. This is an excerpt. Let me know when you get it. Watch you. Light them all up. Two traffic, two sixties. Come on, fire. Hey, Roger. Keep shooting. Julian Assange appeared on Democracy Now! in April 2010, a day after WikiLeaks published the collateral murder video. When we first got it, um, we were told that it was important and that it showed the killing of journalists, but we didn't have any other context. And uh, we spent quite some months um, after breaking the decryption uh, looking closely into this. And, and the more we looked, the more disturbing it became. Uh, this is a, a sequence which has uh, a lot of detail and I think in some ways covers most of the bad aspects of the aerial war uh, in Iraq and what we must be able to infer is going on in Afghanistan. These are not um, bad apples. This is standard practice. You can hear it from the tones of the voices of the pilots that this is in fact another day at the office. Uh, these pilots have evidently and gunners have evidently become so corrupted, um, morally corrupted uh, by the war that they are looking for excuses to kill. So that's Julian Assange sitting in a Washington, D.C. studio right after he released the what they called collateral murder video. I later interviewed Julian in 2014 about WikiLeaks releasing the Iraq war logs. At the time, he was living inside the Ecuadorian embassy where he'd sought political asylum. We sat together there. Iraq war logs, which were published in October 2010, which in some ways has been one of our best uh, analytical works. Um, uh, we work together with um, not just other media organizations, but a number of statistical organizations to work out what the kill count was for Iraq, and combining with other, other figures. And we ended up with more than uh, 100,000 civilian casualties. In fact, 15,000 new, completely undocumented um, civilian kills and documenting uh, U.S. involvement uh, and, uh, and approval of Iraqi torture um, centers within the, within the police and uh, many um, killings of civilians at checkpoints and, and some polit political issues and so on. And that uh, produced a number of inquiries and has fed into cases that have been taken by um, Iraqis that have, has now uh, ended up uh, with an ICC filing, an International Criminal Court filing, against uh, uh, the British military. So that was one of several interviews I did with Julian Assange inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London when we traveled to interview him here, there. That was in 2014. Well, in a moment, we'll be joined by Julian's father, John Shipton, and his brother, Gabriel Shipton. They're here in the U.S. for the opening of a new documentary about John Shipton's struggle to free his son. It's titled Ithaca. This is the film's trailer. 
Julian Assange is the hero of our time. He was the darling of the left. All of a sudden, he's a puppet of Russia. My name is John Shifton. I'm Julian Assange's father. WikiLeaks found that Julian Assange has been arrested. One of the most notorious and controversial figures in custody. Assange will remain behind bars until that extradition hearing, which has been set down for the end of February. I urge the Department of Justice to drop the charges. The maximum jail sentence of 175 years. Because he published the truth. How does it feel to be the father of such a controversial figure, something he's not known around the world? Was that him on the phone before? Yeah. 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 What are you talking about on a, on a kind of regular basis? If Julian is extradited to the United States to face these charges, he will be the first, but not the last. Bit. Then it just collapses under the strain. It looks as though what journalists do for a living is seen to be a criminal act. Uh, uh, shit, so keep it up, man. Thank you. I wish I had your energy. I really do. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I'm f***ing well now. Why do you think there's not a great public love and support? This is really a truly a good question. What's at stake? So if he goes down, so will journalism. That was the trailer for the new film Ithaca, produced by Julian Assange's brother, the filmmaker Gabriel Shipton, who joins us in Washington, D.C., along with their father, John Shipton. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Gabriel, let's begin with you. Talk about just the name of this film, Ithaca. Well, it's named after a, a poem by C.P. Cabafy, and uh, it, it's a poem that uh, you know, John would listen to uh, while we are, you know, traveling around the world advocating uh, for Julian. Um, and it's sort of a really grounding, inspiring poem that talks about, uh, talks about the journey and not the destination. And really, it's, we chose the title because it's really about, you know, when you're fighting for a cause bigger than yourself or uh, for an unachievable or seemingly unachievable goal, uh, you know, you have to live every day or, you know, just take, put one foot in front of the other. And that's what really Ithaca is about. It's about uh, the friends you make along the way, the lessons you learn, uh, the things you see um, that uh, keep you going every day in this fight to free Julian Assange. And, Gabriel, I mean, you were a filmmaker already. And then this hits your family. Uh, can you give us the latest, what this hitting your family is, what has happened to Julian and the latest state of affairs? He's been now at the Bill Marsh prison for four years. That's right. Uh, so it's coming April 11th will be the four years in, in Bill Marsh maximum security prison. He has uh, one final appeal, application to appeal uh, in with the high court in the UK. He actually, all the papers and, and all, all the documents were submitted uh, five months ago, uh, and the High Court is still deliberating on whether to hear this appeal or not. So this is just further evidence that it, it's this thin veil, this thin legal veil uh, that is hanging in front of uh, Julian's persecution. He remains in a maximum security prison. He is not convicted of any crime. He's held there solely at the request of the US DOJ. Uh, the prison has 800 inmates, 20 per cent of whom are convicted murderers. Julian sells a, shares a cell block with these people. Uh, he spends most of his days isolated in his cell. Uh, it really is a dire situation for Julian. And I really just have to uh, compel people that uh, you know, we have to act to free him now. I want to turn to a clip from Ithaca, where our guest John Shipton, Julian's dad, talks about visiting him at the Belmarsh prison for the first time. Can we talk about the day Julian asked you to help? Can you talk me through that? Uh, I don't really remember. What I remember is that he got arrested, and so I came here and went and saw him in the... went and saw Julian in the jail. 
Anyway, he was in a very bad way. Okay. Yeah, just, just tell me, how was uh, Julie's son? Uh, he's lost uh, about 10 kilos weight, uh, and uh, he's uh, psychologically under a lot of stress and pressure. The visiting hours are very, very precious. Sorry, I'm a bit upset. Yes, my first visit, yes. Were you able to give him a hug? Yes, yes, that, yeah, yeah. How was, was that? Uh, it's thing? pretty moving, as you would expect. Yes. Pretty tough for him. Yeah. I guess that'll do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. So I said, I'll, I'll be back. You know, I won't stop coming until uh, you can come home. So that's John Shipton just outside of Belmarsh after seeing Julian inside for the first time. John Shipton joining us from Washington, D.C., um, just before he heads up here to New York with Gabriel um, for the film showings in various theaters around the U.S. We'll be there tonight. Um, I'll be doing the Q&A with John and Gabriel. Uh, John. Talk about that moment, seeing your son, um, what this means to you, and having a film about your um, decision to travel the world to garner support for Julian Assange. Oh, good morning, Penny. Uh, um, well, you know, it's a bit heartrending when well, I went in and saw Julian, who's a bit, um, you know, wobbly, he just— uh, was still in what the prisoners call the hell wing, which the prison governor calls the health wing. Um, it's a, a pod within the prison where um, the prison isolates those it considers uh, ill. Um, Julian was uh, considered uh, so depressed that he had to be watched 24 hours a day. Um, to prevent uh, any self-harm, uh, and he'd lost a lot of weight. Um, usually, you know, Julian uh, is a very strong-minded man, and he never asks me for anything, but he, at that stage, just asked, uh, could, I, could I come and give a hand uh, for—could I come and work at— um, you know, getting him free from those circumstances, and that was about three and a half years ago. Um, yeah, so that's the circumstances. Actually, it would be four years in April. So since then, we've built a, a worldwide movement. Every single parliament in the Western theatre has a cross-party Assange group. The United Nations have involved themselves. The Council of Europe have involved themselves. And every single major uh, civic organization in the United States, ACLU, Asylum, Human Rights Watch, 27 of them in all, have involved themselves in the five great newspaper outlets that partnered with Julian in the release of the Iraq war files, the cables and the Afghanistan war files. They have written a letter uh, to Merrick Garland, uh, asking that the uh, the charges be dropped. Of course, the publishers have written this letter. As Julian is a publisher, all publishers uh, realise that this uh, prosecution has brought a chill to the capacity to analyse uh, policy and a capacity to print that analysis. So. So thereby to inform the public. Newspapers that have called for his release, um, New York Times, The Guardian, El País, Der Spiegel. But I'd like to go back to a 2010 Meet the Press interview with then Vice President Joe Biden. ABC host at the time, David Gregory, questioned Biden about Assange. Should the United States do something to stop Mr. Assange? We're looking at that right now. The Justice Department is taking a look at that, and uh, um, I'm not going to comment on, uh, on that process. Do you think he is a criminal? If he conspired to get these classified documents, 
with a member of the U.S. military that's fundamentally different than if somebody drops on your lap, here, David, you're a press person, here is uh, classified material. Mitch McConnell says he's a high-tech terrorist. Others say this is akin to the Pentagon Papers. Where do you come from? I would argue that it's closer to being a high-tech terrorist. A high-tech terrorist, Gabriel Shifton. Um, that's now President Biden. He said that as vice president on NBC, meet the press. That seems to be a comment across the political spectrum, from Biden uh, to the former director of the CIA, Pompeo, who could be running for president. Your response and what sense you're getting from inside the Biden administration right now on this extradition request? Well, this was, you know, an extradition uh, prosecution that was pushed by, as you say, Mike, Mike Pompeo and the Trump administration. Uh, and now, under the Biden administration, uh, it, it continues on. So, you know, the Biden administration um, is owning this, uh, this prosecution uh, at the moment, uh, and they're continuing and continuing pushing forward with it. Uh, the National Security DOJ, uh, you know, is fighting uh, Julian's application to appeal. And so we see that they're pushing forward with this uh, prosecution. Uh, what we are seeing, though, and what John uh, was talking about is this worldwide movement uh, for freedom of expression that has grown up around the fight to free Julian. And that is now coming uh, into the Congress uh, in the United States. Uh, Rashida, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has a Dear Colleagues letter uh, that is, uh, that's coming from the Progressive Caucus. Uh, we know there are four other Congress people uh, signed on from the Progressive Caucus. So we're really seeing some uh, movement uh, in, in Congress from the Democratic side, uh, as well as Republicans like Thomas Massey, who have been uh, longtime uh, supporters of Julian. So uh, we are hopeful uh, and uh, that this sort of pressure uh, will help uh, the Justice Department, help Merrick Garland really have a look at this uh, Trump era prosecution uh, that criminalizes uh, what journalists should be doing every day, publishing without fear or favour. Uh, they need to have another look at it and uh, really come to the conclusion that the New York Times has, that the ACLU has, that this is a, a threat to press freedom and the First Amendment. And finally, John Shipton, you're Julian's dad. Do you, does he in Belmarsh hold out hope? Sorry, I, I missed the Do question. Do you hold out hope? For oh, yes. his freedom. Uh, yes, uh, uh, so most certainly. Um, I, I use the word faith, you know, uh, every, every second, every minute devoted to continuing. It benefits, first of all, Julian, and secondly, uh, um, our family. Thirdly, all of those people who uh, believe in the great uh, artifact of the United States Constitution, the First Amendment, whereby we can freely read, freely comment, and as a consequence of that, build an understanding of uh, government policy or uh, cultural or social movements. It's just absolutely vital. And uh, it was first discovered or first announced by Goodall, who was the uh, uh, first announced by Goodall as a global problem. Uh, Goodall was the uh, attorney who uh, fought uh, on behalf of the New York Times back in the Pentagon Papers day. Also, I would add that uh, uh, the support of, of Daniel Ellsberg has been you know, stalwart over the last 14 years. And the last time we were here, he invited us into his house. And it's with uh, considerable sadness that Gabriel and I received a, a note from Daniel the other day that he would be uh, leaving us soon. Meaning he's announced that he has pancreatic cancer and doctors have said he has months to live. 
John Shipton, I want to thank you so much for being with us, father of Julian Assange. I also want to thank Gabriel, Gabriel Shipton, Julian's brother, who is the producer of the new documentary Ithaca, which was written and directed by Ben Lawrence. Ithaca will be screening in New York tonight at the New Plaza Cinema on 67th Street in the Upper West Side, where I'll be doing a Q&A with John and Gabriel after the film. On Saturday, it'll be screening at the Cinema Arts Center in Huntington, Long Island, on Sunday at the Picture House in Bronxville, and on Monday at the Alamo Draft House in New York City. You can go to democracynow.org for details.